Hello fam, we are back after our technical difficulties last week and my my vast inability to not uh, pull myself in front of the screen the week before uh, to join us back at, after the uh, battle of Vulture's Roost. Uh, I think it's all kind of family in chat tonight, right? We're all watching... And all close. It's all the people who aren't on screen, and it's all the regulars. Hello to all of you. Thank you for joining us on this fine Thursday UK evening. Uh, well, we've had a little announcement. Um, so Modifius just announced with Polygon uh, about a game that Virginia is helping make at the company. Virginia, why don't you tout your wares, your future wares? I don't know where yes. I'm going with that sentence. So over uh, like a year in development nearly, I've been working on this, I think, since I started at Modiphius, but we have just announced that we are doing the Homeworld RPG based on the 90s RTS game Homeworld, and there's loads of exciting stuff, and it's literally just gone out on Polygon, and I'm super excited. You can have a look, and you can see the cover art on there that we've had done for it um, by the original artist for it. Um, so I'm super, super excited because finally the world gets to know about it and I get to talk about it because I haven't been able to for like a year. <laughs> if you're wondering where that article is, friends, I'm going to post it in chat. There we go. Um, yeah. If you want a little perspective into how long things take to make, V started working on this little uh, proof of concept when she started interning last year. So that was June. Sorry, yeah. July. July I started on that last year and last year and it's not finished yet obviously because it's still in development so rpgs take a very long time to make especially when you're line manage them and also writing a big chunk of the core book <laughs> <laughs> i can relate to that <laughs> we both know how that feels sam hashtag relatable big feels <laughs> um yeah um but aside from that how have you been these last couple of weeks Good, good. I mean, like lots of work preparing for this announcement and mm -hmm. lots of development and also prepping and getting stuff ready to start my own stream, hopefully soon. Yeah, I've seen. So, have you have you shared graphics? I've seen graphics. I have. So I've, I've shared a few on Twitter. I think I shared the, uh, the logo for the stream, which is going to be RPG Horde one shots. It's all the games on this bookcase that I've bought and haven't played properly. Um, She's doing God's work. I mean, I think we should all start doing this because there are <laughs> going to be like five games maybe that I haven't played on there. You want to uh, guess GM, Sam? <laughs> sure. If you want a uh, if you want a Dungeon World or the Expanse RPG. I want the Expanse. All right. Because you kept telling me about that and it sounds fun. I'm sure Don would but, be down. But yeah, I've got, so I just started, uh, I've just finished off doing most of the graphics for that and waiting for Twitch to behave so that I can actually upload panels and stuff. Um, and then it's just doing lots and lots of prep because I may or may not be starting a Patreon as well to produce some fun content and bits and pieces. But I've got, that's what I'm going to spend my December holiday doing, Sam. <laughs> that holiday you needed to take. Yeah. That, that you made me take, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. I'm looking forward to it. It should be cool. You have to let us know when stuff's coming up. Oh, oh don't worry. You're all going to get an invite to the sign-up sheet where I'm going to poke and prod you and make you all play games with me. <laughs> Sweet. That's what we're here for. Uh, Don, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm great. Um... I've been fighting the flu for the last week or so, and um, I'm starting to come out of it now. Uh, last night, I had a six-hour session of D&D &D that went into the wee-wee hours of the morning. Uh, and so I, I was saying, I think Oliver, Sir Oliver, is about where I am in terms of his <laughs> exhaustion level at the moment. We're, we're one and the same. Uh, but I've been doing great. Uh, things have been well. I've got a couple of writing projects that I'm finishing before the end of the year. Uh, and once I hit those deadlines, I, I've done something that I rarely do for myself, and I've not scheduled myself any writing projects for the beginning of the year. 2019 is looking pretty clean because wow. I, I want to have just like a breath before I overcommit myself all over again. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the holidays as well. You can just lend me some of that, some of that free time. That'd be great. <laughs> I 
I think we all do it to ourselves, right? <laughs> Sam, like, we're not allowed free time. We make and play games for a living. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out when you turn your hobby into your job, you work every working. single second of your life. <laughs> it's the opposite of the thing. Yeah. But cool, man. That's cool. Did you just keep streaming that game then last night? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think, what, 8 p.m. until a little after 2 a.m. Don't be getting any ideas now. Because I'll turn into a pumpkin at, like, midnight. (laughs) It went so late that Tom Tom came and joined the end of the game because Tom had woken up. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, yeah, just, just don't get any ideas. I'm not into that life. <laughs> Gone are the days of like whole day D and D games back in uni. I'm not about that anymore. <laughs> oh man! Uh, but Susie, Susanna Grace has joined us again. What have you been Hello. up to? Uh, well, I've been really sick, and then I've been trying to cram all the work in that I couldn't do when I was really sick, and I have basically I played spy hander until got midnight last night went to bed went straight to work i've had like an hour and now i'm here so if i stop i might actually die so i'm just going to keep up the energy i've eaten chocolate i'm, I'm like ready to go i've, I've been, been there manic. too <laughs> i'm a little bit manic no it's good it's good nothing can go wrong no. in ironwood <laughs> with you in this it's manic energy be good. <laughs> oh my days <laughs> Um, but you've been, you've still been streaming since you were sick. Like, oh, yeah. you, you've not stopped. And I just, no. you know, I equally like take my hat off to you, but also chastise you like some parent. Like, you should have rested. Maybe for one or two of those, maybe. <coughs> some of those were not good content. I'm just sad to sat there, like, dying, playing Blood Bond, like, tissue up my nose, like, fuck off, everybody. I'm dying. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, they were still in. They were still, you know, enjoyed. Yeah, people enjoyed it. So yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's what it's all about. Cool. All right. Um, I've been plugging away at stuff. You know, the old nine to five. <laughs> as if basically doing this for a living can be described as a nine to five, but it can. Um, I have actually not been doing that much with spreadsheets or emails recently. I have actually been writing. One for a cool thing that related to Star Trek that I can't actually talk about properly yet, which I'm very excited about. I've and, enjoyed watching Sam write that. <laughs> and the the other thing has been f- the Fallout 2D20 game. I've been working on it. I've been working on the beta. It's slow going because obviously I have other sh- I have other shit to do at work, but um, I'm hoping to get something out. Uh, obviously next year, but like you know, like first half next year, we can get a beta out at least and try and start playing it. That is my plan. Don't quote me because. I'll be prodding you for those deadlines, Sam. Oh, no, no. V is my line manager. For that I, project, I'm line managing Sam, who is also kind of taking a creative lead on it. It's a very weird chain of command for that project. Yeah. Um, but Tom asked if I've gone cold turkey. Uh, I haven't. I still have to check spreadsheets every day. I just don't dwell on them. No, that's been my life for the last two weeks as spreadsheets. We've weirdly swapped. Yeah. All righty. Cool. Enough chat. Um, with some real uh, Brexit developments today, why don't we delve into my fantasy Brexit uh, story? <laughs> with big developments and the aftermath of such. First, we're going to start with Muria. Oh, fuck. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Nice. Can you quickly remind me of what your fake name is, please? <laughs> it's Casella. Cause that wasn't even close to what I had written down. <laughs> Good job. Nice. It's been three Thank weeks. You. Leave me alone. Don't at yeah. me. Mm. It's double Hang uh, on. full stop here. Hang on. Let me just... I added you. Oh, and Frax is asking what Brexit is, and I'm done. Like, like I'm out. <laughs> Frax, you're a Portuguese dude living in the UK. Fuck off, you know what Brexit is. Don't even. All right. Back to Westeros. Fuck that. Uh, Okay, you are working, washing the quills late in the evening after dinner. 
Meals at Castle Ironwood, I imagine, have been quite an awkward affair, with Horatio often taking the head of the table, and his new wife nodding and agreeing to his boastful attitude and talk of their wedding night. Thank you very much. Uh, but you have heard the sobbing at night. Quiet, secret sobs near your chambers. A pool of candles around the rich red wooden desk give you plenty of light to work by, but they kind of blind you a bit to the entrance to the office. Daira paces around a bit, still with you, uh, slowly through the room, looking at different kind of scrolls and books through the thick smell of the tallow and the dust of old documents. And it's then that you hear the voice from the doorway. My sister Casella. How are you finding clerical work? As you look up, you make out the sinister silhouette of Lord Horatio. Uh, Maria takes a breath. She plasters a very um, fake warm smile on her face. And she says, I find it to be quite relaxing, actually. Charlie just gave everyone a destiny point. Oh, it's noise. So write those down. I don't record those. And what of your time here? As relax relaxing as uh, wherever you're from. Well, I didn't come here for a holiday. It has been nice for the Dornish sun. <laughs> but I am happy to be helping my family in whatever small way I can. Noice. I would like you, please, to uh, roll Intrigue Initiative status test, please. Oh, here we go. The breeding specialty. Ooh. Oh. You just. Okay. So with that, Horatio will go first. Uh, I want to make sure that you set your disposition and you uh, at least have a rough idea of an objective right now, although he has approached you, so mm -hmm. don't worry too much right now. And how have you found your ancestral home? Everything you thought it would be? Everything you think your father promised you it might be? He told me many stories about Einwood and his home and what it was like as a boy growing up there. It's very much as he described. The tall curtain walls. The sandstone blocks the dry, dusty yard. Everything. Everything. Right, right. Well, my... I'm going to make a little roll here. If I can find it on the character sheet. It's only been three weeks. So passive defense. Is this a retarget? Yeah. Okay, so my courteous benefit kicks in here, and I get to add nice. my cunning rank to my passive deception. So um, Just... that will be a 16 total. Oh, all right. Cool. Um, so uh, you can role play a bit more if you like. It's um, basically it's your turn in the initiative to actually take an action. Um, Bear in mind that this round, you'll have minus one dice on persuasion tests. Mm. Okay. I'm As he going... kind of looms over you, and there's still he's still kind of masked by this by this this silhouette that the candles are casting. But because they're all around this desk, I can imagine that they're lighting him from underneath. Mm -hmm. And it's all a bit spoopy and it's intimidating. Mm. Mm. Sinister, and like if you will. Smoke. Oh, almost sinister. Um, I'm going to do a uh, read target. Sure. 
Um, and I think as she's doing this, she says to him, and, and what of yourself, uncle? Did you miss Ironwood whilst you were down in Sunspear? Sorry, I was reading Charlie's messages. Apparently, it's oh. a test dice for everyone, but Oliver oh. gets some destiny. Okay. So I'll do this. Sorry, say that again. I am listening. So she says to him, um, what about yourself, uncle? Did you miss Ironwood whilst you were down in Sunspear? And hmm. then, retarget! Yeah, yeah, yeah. His eyes narrow. He laughs a little. Um, so yeah, crack on with that. So that's just awareness, or is it awareness empathy? Empathy applies. I'll, I always allow that. So it's just a bit rubs, really. So 17. That is going to be a success. Do you get anything for degrees of success? Is that on the cheat sheet? Um, No, I don't believe so. Don't uh, you just gain so. the disposition, technique info, and plus 1d on all deception and persuasion tests. All right, he is indifferent to you. Uh -oh. Hang on, let me write this down so I don't forget. Plus one D. Alright. Uh his last technique. Uh his last technique really because it's technique not action would have been Charm Act. Hmm. That doesn't take a genius to work that out, though. Mm. Okay. Um, there's some very awkward pockets of small talk. Um, but for this, ex actually, yeah. So let's, because I've figured this out now properly. Let's do this properly. So pick your technique <laughs> for this round. Mm -hmm. And then based on that technique, then we we can actually do some role play. Then we take our actions kind of in the initiative order. Okay. And it gives it that kind of rhythm. Um, all right. So that this is kind of linked to your action too, but I think the role play could also change the action if you come to it. But te the technique is all like charm or, or seduce or, mm -hmm. or convince or whatever those uh, specialties are. Yep. Okay. So there's, there's some kind of awkwardness as he starts to pace the room slightly. You can imagine Daira in the corner like very pensively watching him mm -hmm. as he does so his attitude is very relaxed he doesn't own the space as such as he has that kind of presence he just is very relaxed in this place even in this weird setting where you've essentially like i guess you know it wouldn't be too far stretched to say it doesn't cross your mind that if something were to happen like you kind of have to jump on the guy Mm -hmm. with the two of you he starts kind of flicking the dust on the shelves and um, picking at scrolls and stuff and then asks you how was it you came to be my brother's daughter it's it's such a surprising thing I think Maria kind of <clears throat> laughs a little bit to herself and says, well, surely, uncle, a man of your years and with a lovely new wife, I shouldn't have to tell you how it's done. I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> but Oliver was never one to chase women. I don't think I have ever known him in my youth to visit a brothel. Honestly, I couldn't really tell you. He never told you? He's never really spoken of my mother, no. And she died on the birthing bed. He raised you then? He did. And you are not at all what I expected. <laughs> You're not the first to have said that. Okay, I'm going to roll my... My test. Uh, that's against your intrigue defense. It's influence. Uh, okay, where's my intrigue defense? Ooh. That is more than mm. seven. Yeah, it is more than seven. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I couldn't find... It's been a while since I've looked at this sheet. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. No worries. Uh, over to your action. 
So Maria is just laying on the charm offensive. Uh -huh. um, this is just just straight up influence. She's just going for it. Uh, so where the heck is charm at? Persuasion, I think. Yes. Let's go. Uh, I get one plus one D against him. Ah, uh, now come on. This is deception. Oh, deception. You are pretending to be his daughter. <laughs> all right, all right, okay, fine. <laughs> he did kind of raise me. My mum did die in the birth, and I'm not telling why. But um, all right, but I do get plus one D. That's is that a keep die or a bonus die? I can never remember. Keep die for retarget. Sick. All right, I'm just gonna type this out because the thing doesn't work. Probably. Yeah. Um. Right, right. <laughs> James is reading you in chat. Like <laughs> so much meta. I mean, I did I did that don't did happen. It's just Um okay. So that is going to be a 15 total. What mouse do you work? Uh that is 2 degrees of success. Okay. Um so that is my deception thingy. Let me get my things out. Uh, use technique to cause damage. Yeah, so you are looking for what the influence is, right? Uh -huh. Uh, so convince charm. What was the? What was Nishka against charm? It was charm, but you made me use deception. Yeah. The technique is charm. So you will actually use. Your persuasion rank is the damage. Okay, it's three, so that's six. Six. Okay. Uh, cool. All right. And so you have always known that you're a sand. No, actually. But he raised you. He did? Himself. No. As you and most people know that your brother, my father, has been sworn to House Greenmont for many, many years. I was raised alongside the Greenmont children as a Greenmont and... Until very recently, I thought I was a Greenmont. Really? Really. And why would the Greenmonts take you in? Well, because he's family to them. If they are more family than we are to him. Then why are you here? Well, Did I wouldn't necessarily say they're more family than you are. I mean, you know as well as I do that Oliver had been exiled. Oliver had been exiled. Not my father. Not Papi. Not any affectionate term. And she is quiet for a moment. She looks down. I'm still adjusting. All right. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, he's going to try and retarget again. Okay. Uh, and I don't care what you say, I'm going to give him a fucking bonus dice for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I flubbed. It's... It was cool. I I liked it. Mm -hmm. Is that the same result? Ugh! Ugh! You gads. Alright. You're safe. For now. For now. <laughs> All right. What's your action? Um. 
<laughs> Charlie, could I, don't don't come at me and chat with Pappy. <laughs> it's called improvisation. Leave me alone. Um. Keep. I think keep up with the influence. Sure. She's just, just. She's just. She's not gonna. You know. She's showing that she's not backing down to this. Like interrogation. She knows what he's up to. Yeah. Um. So same again. Just keep swimming. Sure. Uh, 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 uh. 13. Still two degrees of success. Another six. Ah, well, remember, if, if you've got any modifiers, remember those. Oh, wait, that's and 14. I'm going to take minus two off of the result okay. for the blunder. Right, okay. So it was 14, so back down to 12. Okay. It's one degree of success. Okay. So have a think of your next technique that you want mm -hmm. to implement. One of your persuasion specialties is the list. He changes tack and he starts to go on a little bit of a charm offensive himself. Starts to allude about, uh, well, we hope that you will be very welcome here as you were at Greenmont. Um, and isn't trying to suck up any bonus dice, so cracks on with the charm. Uh, anything that you want to uh, actually role play out? Um, I think. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I got it. Um, Miri actually again beams and says, "Oh, I've been made to feel most welcome. Your mother and father, my grandmother and grandfather, are um very, very lovely, and they've certainly done." above and beyond to take me in and make me feel welcome and part of the family. Alrighty. Oh, come on. Just rolling this for me. Ah, rubs. Mm -mm. No? No. Okay. Uh, so your action next. Uh, again, just straight up, let's just pack at this dude. We're going straight up influence. Mm. Um, this is like charm. She's full on just going for the like, oh, like full on charm. And it's not entirely a lie. Then it's deception. It was not, I mean, Lord and Lady Ironwood have welcomed her. Is that a lie? You said to me not entirely a lie, which makes it deception. Fine. <laughs> uh, make sure I'm rolling that right. Yeah. Jesus, Maria. Wait. <laughs> I forgot I have things here. Have a little look. Oh, fuck. I should be adding my cunning rank to deception test results. So that's like. Hey, it's not even that bad. Come on that's now. That's 10 plus 1, uh, 11. Total. It's one degree of success. That's three again. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pick my technique for the next round. Mm -hmm. Has my brother told you much about his history? He spoke a little of the jewel that killed your brother. He was a hot-blooded man in his youth. Never showed much appetite for the politics of the realm. But he was a stalwart fighter. Incredible with polar. But his rage got the best of him. Slaying the Martel's son. I 
It was our father who had to exile him. It was our father who did the job. No matter what you might have seen here, no love really exists between the two of them. Well, relationships can be complicated. You are, of course, welcome, but... If I were in your position, I think I would return over the Red Mountains. Is that so? You might find it safer there. Simply. Am I in danger here, Uncle? I don't know. Unfortunately, nobody knows what my father might do in his senility. Hmm. Let's roll. Right. Any brownie points for me? Come on now. Yeah, that All was right. pretty. That was pretty intimidating. All right. Eleven. Nope. Jesus. All right. <laughs> Your action. Um. <laughs> oh, sorry. Excuse me. One final one. There you go. My action is to cough to death. <clears throat> I mean, that suits me. That's fine. All right. All right that's fine. And that's it. That suits him. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it would suit him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, switch to combat. No, no, we're going to switch to combat. Let's do it. Let's no. do it. Bring it. Damn it. Get me my stabbing rock. Um, I think we just go for in for one straight again. And Maria says, um, she kind of leans forward on the desk a little bit and says, well, thankfully my father will be returning soon. So I feel very safe knowing that he will be back here. And I'm just gonna get him again with the influence. All right. Uh -uh. Come on, Miriam. Oh, that's a twenty-four. Four degrees of success. That's twelve. Uh. Yeah, you have succeeded. You have won. Uh, what was the last technique you had there? Um, it was charm. Charm? All right. He now likes you. Um, improve the target's disposition by one step. Mm -hmm. Do you have any benefits that would increase that? There are some out there. I just can't remember them off the top of my head right now. Not yet. All right. Cool. You increase his disposition by one step, uh, which lasts until any circumstances would erode it. So he's he, he's permanently liking you a bit better, basically. Mm. You gain plus one dice on all deception and persuasion tests during the next intrigue with him. So please write that down. I certainly will. That is your that's your shebang. Nice. All right. Well, I'm going to move on to Mara now. As she doesn't pay attention to what we're doing. She smiles away. She's as distracted as, as she told us she'd be. She's too busy being famous now. We've lost her. Yeah. <laughs> You're also muted. <laughs> no, sorry. I got a completely different thing. I've got I've got my mum texting me from downstairs asking me about dinner. <laughs> well, that is important. Uh, you might be put off your dinner at this rate, but bear with me. 
sullen voices cry out all around you in pain, despair, or pleading to the gods. Men on the ground with guts in their hands rush to staunch wounds or hold their dying comrades. The whole cliff edge is littered with bodies, arrows sticking out of their necks or their chests or their eyes. Yellows, origins, browns and silvers, the scattering of colours and tabards seems strangely chaotic compared to the battle you witnessed from atop the southern mountain ridge just shortly before. Vultures and crows have already begun to descend on the bodies, as some soldiers are forgotten in favour of the dying, or lie too precariously off the cliff edge. As you pass, the carrion feeders pick at the red and pink entrails and fight over the eyeballs of the fallen. Now that you have ascended on horseback up the cliff towards the ruined tower and walls of Vulture's Roost, the stench of death is all around you. The sting of vomit, the earthy waves of feces, and the copper and iron-laced scent of fresh blood. Is there anything you'd like to do on the approach to Vulture's I, Roost? I imagine that as Mara walks through this, she's got the letter in one hand. She hasn't let go of it in fear of losing it or dropping it. And the other one is just kind of clutching at her chest because she can barely breathe. This is exactly the kind of thing that in her head she built war up to be after losing two of her brothers to it. And she's standing in the middle of it. And she's crying. It's that silent, just tear rolling as she walks past. And I imagine that she spots somebody, whether it's Oakheart or Greenmont, especially if it's Oakheart or Greenmont, you know, a soldier who is laying there dying. And she will feel the need to go over and kind of kneel down on this blood soaked field and take his hand and wait there with him until he goes which probably doesn't take very long but it's the only thing she can think to do and I imagine she does this as she passes anybody she still thinks is alive in that moment of respect because she can't just walk through this battlefield and ignore the people dying around her she doesn't she never picked up um Marcia's you know, ability to heal people and help people in that way. And it's the only thing she can think to do. Yeah. As she makes her way there. The letter in her hand, she knows it's there, but she's distracted by this, the death around her. And it's just, I imagine she finds it unbelievably horrific. This is exactly the kind of thing she didn't want ever to have to happen. She knows why it had to here, and she knows that she wanted, um, you know, the Vulture King's head, but this isn't what she wanted. She knows that there is a means to an end, but this is not what she would ever would have chosen had there been another choice. Okay. I have changed the um, kind of more random rules from the post-warfare stuff to more like a healing test. And as soon as Don leaves the frickin' chair, I, like, need him back to roll for his units. <laughs> um, so we had the Ironwood Gorillas, who um, I should have actually destroyed in one hit in the battle from that first uh, flurry of arrows. And then the Ironwood Cavalry as well, having been disorganized, uh, need to make a healing check. Basically, okay. basically, Don, as you've not got any support units, um, they can't substitute their healing for the for their own units. So I think this is just going to be two dice for each each unit. Okay. And it's just a two d six roll. What am I? What's my goal here? So basically, um, the Ironwood Cavalry became. We'll start with them. They became disorganized a couple of times. So what I've ruled mm. is that it's a difficulty six healing test to remain like to come back to full strength 
Okay. Um, it's plus one per number of additional times they were disorganized. They were disorganized a couple of times. So the difficulty for them is going to be eight. Um, basically, failure will mean they lose a veterancy. A critical failure means that they disband. And whereas normally, if you rolled high, if you roll randomly high, they would like increase in veterancy. Um, what I'm saying, I think, from my house rules is that um, because you gain glory from battle, you have to invest that glory in the units to to rank them up, just like you would like you put it into power for your house. Mm -hmm. Like you basically, you pay the difference. In and the how much glory do I gain, Sam? We're going to come on to that in the next scene. Okay. All right. Uh, and and I also I also I went back and rewatched the battle episode too. I should have destroyed automatically some of the um, bandit units for the exact same reason. Oh my god! All right. <laughs> I well, just wanted to throw that out there. All right. All right. Well, so narratively they're fecked too. Like they're <laughs> so two d six for the cavalry first. Yeah, so you're looking for an eight. And I need I need an eight. Yeah. To uh, stay the same yeah. and a three to not be destroyed. Yes. Cool. <laughs> cool. Well. Oh. Okay. So the cavalry will lose a veterancy. So they go from elite to veteran. Yes. Yeah. And right. um, I will note that down because you will lose the power from the from Iron Woodhouse stats too. Um, so the cavalry lose a veterancy. Okay. All right. Now, uh, so what I said from my terms of my house rules, if, if a unit was routed to difficulty nine and then plus one per extra time they route, uh, if they were destroyed, its difficulty is going to be 12. So you're looking for a 12 for them, for the cavalry to remain like, uh, intact for their veterancy. If you get, so 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. So if you get a 7 or less, they are going to be, uh, they're going to disband. Are we talking about, are we talking about the uh, gorillas now? Gorillas, yes. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to burn one of my two destiny points to give me a plus 5 to this roll. I mean, you can burn a destiny point to just get the difficulty oh yeah i think yeah uh burning no. um automatically succeed on one test as if you had fa rolled the difficulty exactly well i'm going to burn a destiny point to hit the 12 then or whatever i need so that the gorillas don't lose anything all right cool no problemo uh, all right, so they, the gorillas, are basically patching themselves up. Uh, it's more the gorillas that really got hit. So, for Mara, this, this kind of doesn't wreck on her scene a little bit as such as um, they are actually doing a fairly good job of healing each other. Um, so the the people that you go and see, the people that you can get attention to, are tend to be the ones that survive. Uh, yeah, so like I said, glory can be spent to increase veterancy equal to the difference in power of the unit's current and desired veterancy. Oliver. Take him to the top of the tower. Find a window or ledge, and there tie a rope around his neck and bind his hands and feet. So Gorman orders one of his soldiers. As three more go with the man and the wounded Lord Blackmont is carried up the tower's steps. Descending from the tower is a line of captured archers with their wounded infantry comrades marching into the undercroft, marched by the forces that are still standing. Peak's infantry, Tali's men, and the Greenmont couriers and devoted. Stepping forward from the entranceway and looking kind of like at peak um, and also at the line of soldiers that are coming down from the tower Lord Alistair looks 
proud and stands tall. He's a tall young man and looks over everyone with an, with an air of authority. Peak watches uh, Lord Blackmont go as he ascends the stairs as a man behind and in front of him push him up these steps having bound his hands blood still trailing down his side and Peak has his back to you my men the ones, the knights mm -hmm. that came into this tower with me, the gorillas who also came into this tower with me. Yeah. Are they still with me? Yeah, they're patch they're patching themselves up more than these guys are, because these guys really didn't get um I, from what I, I like what I watched back didn't get any actual disorganized like hits on them. So they're still like almost eager for a fight so they're just like they're organizing stuff whereas your men not under any orders have just have just started to try and like heal their mates um oliver will turn back to his men he's looking down the stairs he's pulled himself up along the castle wall uh, to kind of regain his composure after the fight He's breathing hard and he's looking at all of the wounded men and he will catch the gaze of the Knight of the Order uh, of the Blood Royals. That's his second in command. And he will say, gather the men to me. And then he'll turn back to Peak's back and he'll say, Lord Peak, stop. Lord Peak just turns ever so slightly, looks over his shoulder at you, and then turns fully and says, Sir Oliver. Lord Blackmont will hang for his crimes, but not here. No, not here. He returns with me. He must stand trial. His word, Lord Peak, is the only thing that can protect House Greenmont's daughter. If he dies before giving testimony, then she is as good as dead, too. Whether this is to do with your god's daughter, or whether this is to do with the vultures and the raiding and the banditry that the Reach has been suffering, this is a Reach matter. He is destined for Highgarden. No, sorry, let me wreck on that. He's destined for <laughs> he's destined for Star Pike. Have you forgotten where we came from? Who we served, what we believed in, my lord. Careful talk there, Oliver. That is traitor's talk. He has this twinkle in his eye as he says that. At that point, Tali marches in through the doors, or through the, like, the kind of archway, uh, broken up archway. And he says to... Uh, he, he looks actually at the scene. He looks first at Lord Alistair, and then he looks at Sir Gorman, and, and he kind of looks between the two and just kind of says to the room, um, Amen have secured the ruin. And uh, the prisoners are being all escorted downstairs. We have checked. There are no stragglers, no runaways. And Peak takes the room in his stride and it's kind of has this... Lord Alistair is about to speak and then he has his much more commanding attitude. So, so Gorman says, excellent. 
and there are kind of like a scattering of of rough stools and chairs here that um that is kind of in this faux courtroom that you know because having been here before and Sir Peak takes a seat and invites you to sit. Sir Oliver takes the room, striding, despite his wounds, along the platform. He's got his halberd in hand, and he very casually, casually just twirls it back and forth. He turns to peek and plants its haft on the ground and he leans against it a little bit. He does not take a seat. He gives a side eye towards Tarly and then looks back to peek. My men, ironwood men, bled here today to fight the vultures. We would have had them and you hit us in our backs. This child, and he gestures with his head towards Lord Alistair, knew of our plans, and he chose to strike us in our backs. We bled today, and we were victorious, and Lord Blackmont will be leaving with me, Lord Peak. As you've been speaking, you can see Lord Alistair trying to interject, and finally he says, not true, Sir Oliver, not true. He looks at Peak sharply and then says, if it wasn't for us, you would be lying in the dirt like the rest of your men. Oliver turns and smacks him in the face. <laughs> uh, I would like you to roll, I'm not going to track any damage or anything, I'd just like you to roll no. like an unarmed attack and just see how many like degrees sure. of success it is and just see how bad it is. <laughs> And it's, he's just going for embarrassment here. He's not going for pain. Sure. Let's see. Unarmed like it's his own specialty. So it might just be a straight yeah. fighting check or something. So 18. Uh, oh, this is combat defense. Uh, in armor two. Uh, let's take that off because he's not holding his shield anymore. Uh, that's like four degrees of success. Like, how bad do you want this to be? I think that he's kind of I, on the floor and like. I want I want him to hit him right in the lips so that talking is hard, so that his lips swell up and it stings. But I don't want to. I don't want to injure him. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, okay. I mean, there is a six there. No, <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, you smack him square in the in the lips, and he bowls over. Men all around you start going for swords, drawing it from the like drawing the hilt up from the scabbard, and then Peak just raises one arm, and everyone's looking at each other. I can imagine your men are doing very much the same. Peace, friends, peace. He says, he slowly lowers his arm. Everyone else slowly lowers their weapons into their scabbards. I would like you to roll. We're going to roll contested warfare. Okay. Um, and let's see here. Specialty here. So Alistair is no longer going to um, participate in this intrigue. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> B, what was that for? <laughs> Oliver, for Oliver smacking. You want Oliver to smack Peak. Okay. Can I. Well, you smacked uh, Alistair, Desmond... right? I smacked Alistair. Yeah. Either way, you deserve it. Either way, it's a win win. <laughs> All right. Um. Okay, so I uh, let me just check the specialties. Command doesn't doesn't quite do it for me. Um, reputation from spe from status. So um, if you've got any reputation, add that to your warfare as bonus dice for this test. Okay. Let's see here. 
Oh, come on, Gourmet. What the what was that, man? That's probably five, four, people. four, and a one. Jeez, that's rubs, man. Rubs. I was robbed. So, Roll twenty is loving you lot today. I tell you. Oh. Nice. 17. Okay. So you're going to go first in the intrigue, right? So here we go. In okay. the intrigue of not intriguing characters, buckle in, everyone. It's going to be a slow ride. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. I'm gonna. I Rob Tully's going last. Fuck him. Um, okay. This is an intrigue. I want you to set your dispositions. We'll think about that. And you get the first. Uh, you'll get the first action of each exchange. Like I said, so we've, let's pick our techniques, and then we'll have a bit, a little bit of a role play, and then we'll um, we'll actually do our actions. Okay. Okay. All right. So, do we need to announce actions first, or are we role playing then announcing them? No. So you're just you're just picking your technique. You've, once you've picked that, you're all good. And then we just when we role play. So your technique is. I think your technique, from the way that's written, is meant to inform your role play. So if you're trying to be convincing, then you know you're trying to convince somebody. So you're trying to say those things, rather than seduce somebody, which is then that'll change your role play, right? Okay. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Pope's Carousel of Rope Progress. Hey, that's that's episode eight. Chill out. <laughs> cool. Okay. So I picked my technique. Uh, oh God, not for Tully yet. I mean, to be fair, both of them are going to do that. Cool. Okay. Uh, Sir Oliver, as everyone goes to reach and half draws their weapons and everything's tense, he turns away from Alistair after smacking him. He doesn't give him another look. He just leans on his halberd and he stares at Sir Peak and he waits. There's just a slight, slight curl at the corner of his lips, a slight smile, but he's employing the age old negotiation tactic of not being the first one to speak. He actually takes like a water skin that's been handed to him. And just like he like he takes a few gulps. As he just kind of relaxes into it a bit. And Tali's looking around like Am I not doing any fucking work here? Plus, what the fuck is going on? Kind of thing. And then... Actually takes a seat near Sir Gorman. And then Sir Gorman says, Come with us to Starpike. We can see this out together. Tarly chimes in. This... This is a reacher matter. This they should be. We should be go, going back to High Garden, surely. And Gorman just kind of s turns to him. It's like, no. Um. Gorman, and just stares at you. Oliver, as they kind of like start arguing with each other and, and um, there's obviously some disagreement between Tarly and Gorman. He doesn't even look at Tarly. He just keeps looking at Gorman and he says nothing. You considering? <laughs> I am withdrawing. Oh. Wait, leaving the intrigue or withdrawing? No, no, no. I'm 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 withdrawing oh, gotcha. for this round gotcha. to change my combat or to change my intrigue defense. Yeah. So actually, so it's like it's like a dodge kind of thing for for the for intrigues. So you're going to roll for me a will dedication test, and this result replaces your intrigue defense uh, until some significant until point the, in the next round. I can't remember what it says. Is it just the next round or? I think it's next Is round. Is it not yeah. the rest of the encounter? No, you have to keep going with it. Oh. It's not as great as you might think. Then let me, let me, the role play is the same, sure. but instead I'm going to read target. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's an awareness empathy. It is. Against his passive deception. The meta right. is real, sir. I think you know what's going on here. 
Yep. <laughs> and I'm going to uh, I'm going to use one of my keep dice as well on this awareness test. Oh, okay, so the the one that got sent to you by Charlie. I got yeah, I have two of them, so I, I still have one left. Oh god. All right. Use your freebie. That's not recorded anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. I'd, 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 I'd give you a test die for just smacking Alistair, to be fair. Take it. Oh, and I have empathy as well. Ugh, you got all the things. Good good guy, West Rossi boyfriend. Oh, that's not right. That's five. No. <laughs> <laughs> Keep four. Oh, no. A 10. Does that beat his passive deception? Yes, it does. Yay. So his last technique didn't happen because it hasn't gone yet. Well, let's, okay. His technique for this round um, is persuasion convince. All right. Uh, which he's going to do now. Uh, so you get plus one test die against him for uh, for your persuasion and deception test for the rest of the intrigue. Mm -hmm. uh, is Is two... Your passive... No, sorry. It's to your intrigue defense. No, it's better than that. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, the, obviously, he's just like, yeah, come with me. It's cool. Yeah. Buds. Bud, buds, maybe. <laughs> just doesn't land at all. Jesus Christ. Call me. Fuck. <laughs> all right. So, you folks, all of you, do, what, do whatever you've got to do in this game right now, because roll 20... <laughs> Roll 20's got your back. <laughs> oh, the tables have turned. Noted. Um, the yeah. tables have turned. Do your crazy shigana... Sh I can't even say it. <laughs> yes. What, what's uh, Tarly doing? Is he part of this? Is he like an official part of this intrigue as well? He is. Tarly's, conf Tarly's, Tarly's hella confused. And it's like, <laughs> can we just get to... Can we just go home? I just want to go home. Uh, but he's not on my bloody... Oh, yes, he is. Glendon and Tarly. I want to say it's him or is that his son no he's got heart's bane it's definitely him cool oh where were you when I needed you Tarly oh he's got better stats and everything uh no I mean I think your intrigue defense is near eight yeah closer than two um it's closer but my intrigue defense is nine. These guys are rubs. All right, new round. Um, do I gain their? Do I also gain their dispositions? Yes. Sorry. From read target. Uh, they're both amiable to you. Oh, good. It's basically, yeah, you fought with us. Yeah. But you're also Dornish and that exile guy. Oliver will finally speak um, after that long silence, and now he will kind of look between the two of them. What is it that you are doing here? Truly, why have you come all this way to Vulture's Roost? Surely this is a matter that could have been handled by the local lords here, such as my house, House Ironwood. This land, technically, I believe, belongs to Lord Will. <laughs> I was being serious. I'm being serious. And he stands. Again, uh, Gormy's like a tall guy, too, I think. Kind of broad and muscular and kind of, like, domineering. He says, I have been raided, set asunder. My three castles stripped from me and the remaining one... Nothing because of these Dornish raiders. I am here to enact my vengeance, to get justice for the people of my one remaining demands. Starpike. And so it is only right that the possible perpetrator or the person who knows exactly what's going on is coming with me to Starpike. And what of you, Lord Tarly? Why are you here? 
he's still sitting and he kind of awkwardly not looking at you says we have fought the Dornish border lords for hundreds of years we must treat these any any of these raiders with with what they deserve they are killing our small folk not even at war with us they are killing our small folk and hurting and robbing and taking pe things riches and people from our lands we have every right to be here and to be seeking justice, as Sir Gorman says. All right, let's roll in bones, man. You can say your next bit in the next round. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, it's your action first. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, let's just call this a uh, an influence. Mm -hmm convince sure. and um i think because he was speaking mostly at first at least to peak mm -hmm. um that's still the majority of his focus so i'm gonna convince peak with my bonus die i just added into my macro or my test die from retarget nice 23 what yeah you got an expertise. I took expertise and convince. You cheeky, cheeky blighter. Uh, that is four degrees of success, I would imagine. Ooh. Oh, it's three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so that will be 12 influence. Uh, mm. Yeah, Sam, do it. All right, he's going to take a point of frustration. Just check out his will. Okay. Okay. And he then uh, is going to, as he said, make his case. Mm -hmm. And that should have applied the... Oh, okay, take a four off of that because it didn't apply the frustration. Um, yeah, so that is a four, which isn't going to beat it. Uh, and Tarly is going to try and convince you with an 11. An 11 will do it. Yeah, one degree, one degree of, success. of success. So it's three influence. Remember to take off your, uh, soak some of that from your disposition rating too. So if it's indifferent, oh, you right. won't take any. Or if it's uh, amiable, you won't take any either. Amiable, I'll take. Oh, I won't take any. No, it's amiable's three dr. Yep, and the, influ and the influence is, in is three, so it's three. Just so it soaks it all. Yeah. So there we go. Oliver, um, will take a couple of steps forward. Uh, as there's continued disagreement between the two as to where all three of them as to where, uh, Lord Blackmont's going to go. But he stays engaged with Sir Gorman. My lord, I am sorry for what you have lost, and you know more than almost any man in Westeros what I have lost. But it is not these vultures that took your castle. It is not the Dornish on the border or the poor people in the mountains that took this from you. You know who took what is yours, and do you know why? Are we knights? Do we not hold on to our ideals? Do we not protect our people? Do we not speak the truth and act the truth? 
we're all, all that we have become is frightened, lying to ourselves, lying to our people when we know who the real enemy is here. It's at that moment that Mara steps through the broken doorway to the tower. And Mara, before you is the scene of these men, Sir Gorman squaring up to Sir Oliver as he speaks. And just beyond that, between the two men, you can see Alistair with blood gushing down his face, leaning against the wall, with a couple of his men tending to him as he kind of tries to brush them off, but actually quite appreciates the fact that they're trying to stop his nosebleed. Or his cut lip. Mara steps in and she's still got this letter in her hand and I imagine the front of her dress is bloodied from where she's knelt outside um, and so are so is her other hand I would imagine too she just stands there and looks at this can you make me a status reputation test please yes um uh, our reputation not breeding Sorry, breeding. Oh, oh no. Okay. Uh, yeah, breeding. Go on. Breeding. Okay. Um, 16. Okay. I'm actually going to say, let's take... Let's take one of those remaining threes off as a penalty dice for the fact that you've got blood all down you. Uh, so just the six, four, and three, 13 instead, which I believe yep. still isn't as good as Don, your first roll for the warfare one. Are you, cause you got an 18 and Gorman got a 14, right? Okay. So Don, you do get an action first and then I'm going to let Mara go second. Uh, this is um, an insight. Yeah, he yeah. wants to insight peak. I thought so. <laughs> so cool. what do I roll? I roll. Do I roll convince and then this, I? So do... this is persuasion insight. Okay, so that's, persuasion insight. That's a specialty. I'm yeah. gonna use. I'm gonna use a one of my test die. <laughs> My last test die. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And do I get any bonus dies? Uh. You don't have to. No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry. I saw where you were going with it. It was nice, but you know, I wasn't like amazingly surprised by it. All right. I think this is right. Yes. 12 is one degree of success and insight is powered by cunning what's your cunning rank sir uh, my cunning rank is three and so I think he soaks that. Do you get any modifiers from your... Oh, I do. I, I didn't add them in from last your disposition. time So many little yes. moving parts. We always forget little bits and bobs like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that makes it a 15 then. You have just won this intrigue. Well, so you've knocked Gorman Peak out at least. Right. Yeah, Tarly's still in it. Yeah. And like as you were speaking, Sir Gorman has squared right up to you and is just looking just down at you as you're just a few inches in height below him and he stares down at you. And then just you feel this threat could turn into something violent, something physical. He just turns and walks up the steps 
towards the top of the tower. Mara, you're up in this in this slither of time. She watches that for the split second. She's got no idea what's going on here. Alice is bleeding. Peek is being an asshole as per usual. Um, she comes in and she kind of watches it, looks at Peek and watches him go off and then looks at Alistair as that gap opens up. Tries to flick over to Charlie and then to Sir Oliver. She's like, I don't know what's going on here. And you know what? I don't care. We have bigger problems here. She hands the letter forwards. Tali stands out of etiquette even here. She will she will give him a brief look that is the you know, recognizing that he has stood as she's entered, but she's like, we've got bigger problems. The Lady Marcia has written from Greenmont. Maycar wants this host disbanded. You see Alistair in shock staring at you you hear him just say under a like padded um handkerchief what marcia has asked to recall the greenmont men this host has been declared illegal by the crown and anyone found here should make our travel this way, will be branded a traitor. So I don't know about the rest of you, but I think perhaps now you have what you want. We all turn round and go home before we lose our heads. Like, is, um, is Black Monster in the room? No. No. Tali looks around and says, well, Gorman was right about the dangerous talk. Um, v, why don't you roll a persuasion test for me? Yeah, she's, she's trying to convince them that this is the course they have to take. I'm going to give you a straight plus five bonus to the result for this, for having this, like, letter in hand and this Ooh, okay. this writing this signet this little s- s- sign signature so um did i roll any ones i get to re-roll ones so there's two of those yeah i know it's a thing roll 2d uh 2d6 not 2d20 <laughs> don't roll that um so it's a three and a six that will replace i just, i don't know if it does actually that will replace the two that's there to a six. Cool. Um, so that becomes, oh god, I have to do math. Six, five. six is 12, another five is 17, and a three is 20. 20, and I get plus two to convince Tess, that's 22, and I add one to persuasion results, so 23. Plus the five, 27. 28. <laughs> so a disposition to Tali? To Tali? Um, she's indifferent to him. Okay, so no, no bonus Nothing. or yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what is your will rank? Uh, my will rank is three. Okay. <laughs> the lesson here is don't ever let Mara talk. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I'm gonna give it to you, Tali. So, you essentially what you want to get out of these people is we all need to leave. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh. Okay. Uh, Oliver, I. How does that affect you? So, what is your uh, with your intrigue defense, what was it you got in the end? 27. V. Uh, 28. 28. So, 23, 18, 13. What's your intrigue defense? 
Don. Me? Don. Yeah. Don. Is she speaking to, yeah, I guess Oliver is listening intently, but he doesn't really know what's going on with Makar. Uh, uh, intrigue no, defense. Um, so, yeah. yeah, sorry. Who did you want to actually target, uh, V? Which um, single person did you want to target? If anything, really, I imagine that she's looking at, you know, between Tali. She's looking between all of them, but really she's hoping her words hit Alistair. Okay. Because she doesn't really care too much about, she doesn't particularly like Peak. And she's, like I said, indifferent to Tali. Yeah. And she knows Sir Oliver will do whatever Sir Oliver's going to do anyway. But her real thing, what she's trying to hit home at is Alistair, we need to fucking go. Mm. You have the Greenmont men. Uh, he walks up to you, bloody hanky in hand, and looks at the letter. His eyes wide with fear. And he says, if, if Makar is ordering Lily Marzio this, he, surely he knows about the, the whole host, its leaders. And he's looking at Tali now, and he's kind of like, you can actually feel him. Even though it's not too visible, Oliver, Mari, you can feel him like shaking in his armour. She puts her hand out, the hand that he's holding the letter in, and like tries to steady him. She just kind of holds it and says... We have to go. You got what you came for, didn't you? Walking up the steps from the from the um, uh, the kind like the kind of catacomby things um, is Babblebrook. Uh, he kind of he look, looks at the room without really taking it in very easily, and just says, uh, Lord, "All prisoners squared away," and then looks around. It's like, oh, something's happening. Oliver smiles at Babblebrook. He hasn't seen him in a long time, but he but he doesn't he doesn't address him. I imagine at this point Mara has given you know Alistair a hug in his arm as she's just put her arms around him more for her than anything because she's like she's covered in blood and her husband's okay and she hasn't even had time to process the what if something happened to him there mm. and she looks over his shoulder and she says, "So Babblebrook, oh, thank God." And then kind of parts back. And there's a relief in her in that, like, she's touched her husband. He is real. He is there. He's in one piece. And so is, you know, Sir Babblebrook, who she's known since she was a child. Sure. Um, Tali goes up to Babblebrook, says, Prince Makar has ordered your forces return to... House Greenmont. I would suggest that you take the letter on its word and depart. Uh, he looks at Sir Oliver, he says, You ha have here what you came for. If you take him, what are the rest of these vultures? I do not care what becomes of them. They are criminals. You may take them as you will. But my lord, Tarly, why would uh, Prince Makar declare your host here treasonous? Surely you have come here lawfully. Yes? We have. By the laws of the Reach, we have. Then why would he say that you are here unlawfully? He, he kind of like swallows at that with difficulty. I do not know. You are a proud lord. The great house. Respect from House Tarly stretches even in the southernmost reaches of Dorne, all the way to the north, even those that hate your house. Respect and fear the might of its armies. Will you stand for this? 
to be branded a traitor for doing the law's work, for being here? Will you crawl with your army back to your homes now because of a letter? And what other option would you suggest? Come with us. Return. My knights and my army. And let us convene at my house. To Ironwood with you. <laughs> my forefathers would not know what to say. Don, I would like you to roll for me. Uh, okay. A persuasion test. Uh, any specialty? I think it was convinced, right? Convince, yeah. Uh, this is going to be against his passive will, and I am going to increase it by th uh, three. Whereas it's kind of passives can go up in four. I'll increase it by four, just because like this is like so That's ancestrally preposterous, right? All right. That it's yeah, it is a big ask. 24. All right. Uh, but he does agree. Very well. We should leave as soon as we can. And he turns to Mara. He says, if Mekar is anticipating that to come here, then I'm sure... If the message was from Greenmont, he is not too far away. Amara just looks at him dumbfounded. Just... Are you... You're not seriously... We don't even know how many men he's coming with. And he'll come with men. Babelbrook steps forward. Uh, um, my lady, we have custody of the prisoners uh, but i will follow the green or black i will follow the prince's order look the prisoners perhaps if we start leaving now we can meet to make our host on its way here we can hand over the prisoners before we start whatever this is and she points between um <laughs> Tarly and Oliver, whatever this, this is, before this starts and gets everybody here in far more trouble, I'm sorry, but my house and my family have already been branded traitors once. I won't stand for it a second time. Alistair, for, for, the, for, the, for what he's worth right now, turns to, um, to, to speak to the room for a second and says... Specifically more to Oliver than anyone else. I intend to... I intend to return to my own hold fast. Go get him, if you think that you can prize Sir Gorman from him. And Alistair turns to leave. Marvel's Oliver will approach Mara not like he barely pays Alistair a passing glance I, I just I like to think it. Alistair has like a little flinch as you come <laughs> forward right. and it's like oh just, fucking whatever just, it just like walks off and like a couple Mara, of soldiers come up with him and like I imagine Mara Oliver notices costs. that as she's got her hand on him and just looks oddly at why he's flinched without any real knowledge of what's happened nice I'll give you. I'm gonna give you a bonus die uh, for for the like not meta gaming. That's lush. I like that. <laughs> she yeah. she looks confused for a second. Like what what is wrong with you? <laughs> Let me pop that on your sheet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, Oliver will uh, approach Lady Mara and offer him his two hands. They're covered in blood. She'll take uh, only them. some of it's his. You'll you'll notice that she is also covered. It, like her dress, the front of her dress is covered in blood and so are her hands and she'll, you know place them, I'm, I think Alistair still got the letter, so she'll place both of her hands 
in yours and kind of grip them tightly. My lady, I am sorry that it took such a grim day for me to look upon you again in all of your beauty and hear you speak with all of your wisdom. I know that your father and your mother would have been so proud to see you now, but I am glad, Lady Mara, it's good to see, to you, see you again. I think my father might be shocked that his daughter found her way across a battlefield, but somehow I don't think mother would be. <laughs> no, she would not. There is no Are way you? that I can talk sense into you for this, is there? There's no way you're going to disband the rest of your host. We'll turn over this prisoner to make her. She smiles at you knowingly. Let us speak of something different. What of you, my lady? Will you return with your husband now to your new home? Or do you go to House Greenmont? I will probably return with Alistair. That is my place now. I will one day be the lady of that house. I hope that we can pass through and see the Lady Mara on the, the Lady Marzia on the way back. If you do, will you tell Lady Marzia something for me? Of course. Please, and he squeezes your hands a little bit. Tell her that I am coming. And perhaps it is time to begin to prepare the celebrations. She has told me, I know. And I could not be happier for you, Sir Oliver. <sighs> if Alistair cannot bring justice for what happened to my sister, and I cannot talk you into sense into disbanding your host, then all I can ask of you is that you bring justice to him. I will bring justice, my lady. I will. And make sure you return to the Lady Marcia alive. She already lost my husband. My husband, my father. <laughs> There's too many, too many family members. So many white dudes. I mean, can we just... <laughs> she already lost my father. And I do not wish for her to lose you either. No man lives forever, my lady. But my story... It is not done yet. And how's Good. Greenmont? is not done yet. No man lives forever, but I would hope that you get to live with Lady Marcia, just for a while at least. I have to go. May the gods be with you, Sir Oliver. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, uh, may they be with you as well. And she'll reach in and give you a kiss on the cheek and, you know, a, a tight hug. She'll squeeze your As hand you, one more time. You, you go in for the hug and, and squeeze, um, and he's much taller. He bends down and he'll just plant a kiss right on the top of your head. She'll squeeze your hands that one last time. And she'll lean in very close and say, do not trust Lord Peak. And she'll pull back with a look of concern, but then immediately switch to that smile. There's a little twinkle in Oliver's eyes. Something knowing. She smiles a little bit more at that. And she looks over at Lord Tarly and says, May the gods be with you too if this is the choice that you make. And she looks up at Lord Peak and just like just stares at him for a moment. You, you look up the tower, but you can't see him. He's up on the very top. I'm at, she looks up anyway. She looks towards the stairs. And she doesn't even consider calling out to wish him luck or health. She just stares. Yeah. Looks back at Oliver and smiles. Reaches up for his arm, kind of gives it a squeeze. And then turns to find Alistair. 
and Oliver will turn in towards his knights, the Order of the Blood Royals, and just simply say, we march soon back to House Ironwood. Prepare the wounded. We must go quickly as we can. I will return in just a minute. And he turns and heads towards the stairs to go find Sir Gorman Peak. Sir Gorman has Lord Blackmont with both hands by the scruff of his neck, pulling on this uh, noose that's been tied at the top of the tower. And it's kind of precariously, he's precariously balanced on the edge. Essentially, this is a kind of like a strange little improvised prison cell with the rope as a kind of guarantee. And he's pushing him around, picking him up, dangling off the edge. And as you approach, you can hear him saying aggressively, intimidating um, questions about what he's been doing here, about raids on his lands, and following on that kind of line of inquiry. <clears throat> he clears his throat. Uh, it, are there any other soldiers up here? Uh, or is it just Peak and Black Line? Three of you. He clears his throat and he calls out, Lord Peak, there is word, a letter. And he's still got Blackmont as he like turns his body a bit to look at you to the to his right. It seems that Makar Targaryen has declared your armies and your host and your actions here. Illegal, treasonous. It is said that he comes now to ensure that you have disbanded and returned home. Maker. Yes. I've dealt with treason once and I don't give a fuck about that little shit. And he's pulling at Blackmont again. Gormand. Lord Tarly, his armies, they are returning with me and mine to House Ironwood. Makar will not go there. I thought it might be an opportunity for all of us to speak openly, safely, about the future of our houses and of this land. I know that you are angry, and I am angry. But we can act rashly now, or we can be clever. Fucking clever, not got it. never got us anywhere. You don't want anything about this. This is, this is courtly talk. This is deception. This is ridiculous. You just want some kind of revenge. Whatever this man has done to you, I see it in your eyes. It's vengeance you want, nothing else. It is not vengeance for me. It is love for my It is love for Lady Miria of House Greenmont and for the people of this land. They deserve a better world. I took my oath as a knight, just as you, and I believe in that oath. And I am willing to do anything to protect my people and my family and to make sure that evil is punished with justice. And I want you to come with me. I want you to stand with me 
as you did before. You, you are one of the greatest warriors in the world. We should work together. I'm not listening to any of this bullshit. And he pulls a knife and he says, You want this cunt? Go and get him. And he cuts the uh, noose and pushes Blackmont off the tower. Oliver races to the edge of the tower to try to grab onto anything he can of Blackmont to keep him from falling. Peak grabs you, almost to stop you from falling off. Lee brings you in and says, Go get him. And I want you to roll an athletics strength test, please. Ah, uh, jeez. Does Mara see... Blackmont fall? No. This is the different side as the tower is towards the back of the keep, kind of like off the off the cliff there. Uh, you're kind of more towards the front, the like the southeast side. Well. Twenty. I'm going to spend my bonus dice from the uh, one I've got in the from, the, from chat. Oof. And oh, hang on, that's Tarly. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Tarly is pretty oh, strong. He's all right. Where is he, Peaky? Come here, Gormy. What the sniveling shit was that? All right. And you you feel uh, Sir Gorman go to push you off. And as you won the athletics test, what's the outcome? Do I, do I have the chance to push past him and grab Blackmont before Blackmont falls? Blackmont's or gone. Or is Blackmont mate. gone? Blackmont's, it's, it's free fall. He's gone. So there's a moment where he's hanging over the edge and then he feels Gorman uh, try, is he tries to push Oliver out as well. Yeah. And Oliver uh, manages to hold on to the, the scruff of the tabard around Gorman's armor here yeah. um, to hold himself up. And once he feels his left hand catch only air and not Blackmont, he turns and there is a burning rage inside his eyes as he looks up to Gorman. Uh, and he doesn't have words. He spits blood into Gorman's face, and he reaches for the dagger that Gorman has drawn, mm -hmm. and his goal is to jab that dagger into Gorman's side and then roll and throw Gorman off the top of this tower. Okay. Uh, I need you to roll a disarm... Oh, wow. Which is going to be passive against his passive fighting, which is very difficult. That's not good. Yeah, that's very high. James, uh, James what, what was that 725 bits for? <laughs> Just automatically killing me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, disarm. Resolve is a standard attack, except your difficulty is equal to your opponent's passive fighting. <laughs> Can't cancel James, Susie. I just did! Can't. <laughs> right, bonus dice and a test die. All right. Okay. All I'm right. keeping them just in <clears throat> case, James. All right. Passive fighting. So you're rolling so, fighting. You're rolling fighting. I'm just rolling straight fighting. You're rolling fighting. Small. Uh, well, you're you're brawling, fighting, brawling. Okay. Fifteen. 
Uh, test dice for Don. <laughs> do you want to test die, Don? Uh, yes. Okay. And I will immediately use it because yeah. I don't, otherwise I don't think I have much of a shot to stop his, uh, to get over his passive. What's his passive? Just so I know what I'm shooting for him. 20. Will you tell me? You don't have to tell me. I, that's what I thought. I thought it was a 20. All right. Well, fingers crossed, fam. You did this maneuver. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right. One degree. So there's no crit, but. You're gonna do. But my goal is to. My goal is to like. I'm not trying to hurt him so much as I'm trying to throw him off. Ah, uh, it's oh no, fighting time. And we're just struggling with each other. Fighting, fighting time. time. I'm yeah, down. I'm down. If you defeat him, you can do that. But this is damage. Uh, okay. Ah, someone tell me the dagger damage. I don't know. I need the. I need uh, the manual. It's like agility. I need the manual up here. Something. Uh. <laughs> Like a whole a bidding war has now happened in the chat. I, I, I hope you're happy. Frax, who is that for? For Oliver? It's yep. for Oliver. Okay, okay, I guess. No, Adobe, I don't want to start the tour. Just give me the PDF. <laughs> no, James God. James started this by giving bits to Gormy, and there is no way that this is how Oliver goes <laughs> James, out. James is like, it's fine, you'll just land on Blackmon. It's it's squishy, right? <laughs> so I have another test die, is that what that is? Uh that's a bonus die. Bonus die. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, okay, so a uh, dagger is agility minus two damage. Okay. Uh, so that's one degree of success. How much How much damage do you do whilst he's in his castle forged plate harbor? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not, this isn't going to do any damage. No. Uh, this is just him trying to get the dagger out of his hand. Um, uh, so I guess that's two damage. Agility minus two, two damage. Sure. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, okay, we're kind of in initiative because it's back and forth. So he's going to go next. Uh, my action is going to be... Uh, buh, buh, buh. There is a thing. Maneuver. Fighting test versus passive fighting. Success inflicts minus one dice on tests. And forces the target to move one yard per degree. Uh, target's about to move into a lethal situation. May make an awareness six test to notice. I think you've noticed there's a cliff behind you. Yeah. So that's fine. You know. Uh, I'm gonna do brawling with this again because it's kind of just you are just kind of brawling. Uh, what's your passive fighting? It's also twenty. Cool. Uh. What what was all the what were all the numbers? So I got a test die and a bonus dice. So I'm gonna roll six and keep six. I think yes, and a test die. So I roll seven, keep six. Don, if I do this, you're off the cliff, right? I uh, I can't be pushed into a lethal situation if I'm aware of it. Oh, that shit. Okay. Is that what it says? It says uh, your opponent uh, is entitled to make an awareness test to notice the danger and move into a different space. Yeesh, how rubs. All right. I tell you what, I'm going to do it, and if I do it, I burn a destiny point, and you're off cliff. <sighs> Motherfucker. All right. <sighs> As he's I tried, brawling with you, and he's trying to move <clears throat> you, like he's trying to push you off. You rolled one point away from killing me. Mm. Um, and I have, I, I, I have spent all of my destiny points. So. It's time to get down. Uh, so we're struggling back and forth. Oliver drops the dagger, and with uh, Gorman unable to push him, he pushes back off of Gorman, takes two steps back, reaches around the back of his shoulder, grabs his pole arm, flips it around, and it's my turn now, right? Yeah. All right. So bear in mind that you're in very close proximity to this guy, mm -hmm. and like... Uh, well, I, I didn't really outline this. I imagined it as quite a tight space too. Like weirdly, that you've got this kind of it's tight kind of 
winding staircase that then just opens out onto this like weird wooden little kind of lookout construction really shoddily made um with that like noose having been tied up something improvised um because it's because it's a reach weapon and having actually fought with like larp polearm type stuff if someone's right up against you there's fuck all you can do um if you can pull back then you can get an attack off but if you're basically like right up against each other like this right now it's going to be a minus one dice to the test Okay, how, how is is there a way I can pull back? Do I need to make another test to be able to do uh, that? Or no, so you can. So as a lesser action, you could move, and then you've only got lesser action attacks as not as options. So there's no there's uh, no like charge or counter attack or uh, reckless <laughs> right. attack because they're all greater. All right, one second, because I have a thing that I might want to <laughs> do here. Then I have a few of them. All right, so. Um, <clears throat> So I can only, I, I can do two lesser attacks. Is a regular attack a lesser attack or a greater attack? So it's a lesser a action. action or... You can only do one attack action in a turn. Oh, but usually I could do two. Greg's just jumped in with some destiny for you, Don. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Why aren't you giving it to me? No, no. This You're is on the good. wrong team, man. <laughs> um, all right, so... Uh, then in that case, um, I am going to uh, do, 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 fighting test against passive endurance. Um, yeah, so uh, Oliver in that case is going to um, step back mm -hmm. out of range um, and then uses lesser action to swing around and attack. Sure. So this is Halberd. And his goal is he's stepping back and pushing back since he kind of won that struggle with him is to get, he's walking away from the edge of this cliff so that he can't be knocked over the cliff. Yeah, you're effectively starting to stepping down the steps a little bit. Stepping down the steps a little bit, just a foot, and off to the side just slightly before he brings his yeah. halberd around. Nice. You're yeah. like, so, so you're in like a, because uh, they don't mean yards, you're in roughly a kind of like a yard width. At the moment, you've got walls on both sides of you, but about another yard or two back, um, the, the wall to your left breaks open, and then it, it's another drop down the tower. Okay, on so the I can't right really back side, up that far. Yeah, on the right hand side you've got wall because you've got the exterior wall as as shabby and as as you can see three bits of it, but it's a wall at least. So as long as he has, as long as he, as long as he's able to make some open space for him, even just for a few moments, so he can get off a full swing. Yeah, that's what he's going for. And it's going to be a twenty-seven. Hmm. I also imagine it's more of a jab too, with like the top of the spear of that halberd. Okay, um, combat defense. I mean, why don't you have any one why don't you have any fucking weapons on here two where's your shield man ridiculous all right um no penalty there is accounted for okay four degrees of success no sixes all right Oof, all right that is still going to be 32 damage yeesh 22 castle forge plate thank you very much uh oh fuck me man That's still an absolute ton. Okay, wound time. Here we go. Uh, it's like stab rib. So he stabbed him in the rib. Okay. His turn, he's gonna head down the stairs towards you having drawn his long sword ah he's got a bastard sword hasn't he let's do it. so drawn his bastard sword in two hands makes the distance and comes at you to try and run you through uh, let me scroll down to here bastard sword I don't know if I've got any dice 
because I added them all to that test. Balls. All right, long blades. Let's see if we can make this work. Let's check if the penalty dice are working too. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there is four. Yes, so the penalty dice is working. That is 22 against your combat defense. Two, three, four. Uh, so Oliver will um, basically hold his ground, and as he charges, as Gorman charges him, he spits out the words, you are no knight. And I'm going to use my once per session anointed ability to give me plus five to all of my yep. passive scores for the round. Yep. So, what is uh, so that'll make it... That'll make it two degrees of success for him. Okay, still a crit plus four base weapon damage uh, from the two sixes. And with the Bastard Sword, is adaptable, so that's the Elytics plus two. Six, ten, twenty points of damage. All right. So he's going to take... You've still got a wound, injury. right? Yeah. But I used burned one of my destiny points to clear the injuries and health and whatnot. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> All right, so I uh, yeah, so I'll take an injury <clears throat> so that that doesn't give me a full wound. You can remove all damage and injuries, but not wounds. I can remove my. It's what is it? My will with injuries, or is it endurance? Uh, so if you use an injury, you can remove your endurance rank in damage. But that that destiny point from earlier, you can use it. Doesn't it doesn't remove the wound. Yeah. It removes the, yeah, that's right. Damage and injuries. Right. Uh, so minus, so it does 20 minus my armor. Um, right. So I'll take one injury then as he comes through and he cuts through my already uh, kind of beaten and damaged armor um, and taking an injury, you hear that uh, from the back of Oliver's throat and that triggers my berserker ability and I get to immediately counterattack. This is nasty counterattack nonsense. All right. Whoa, that's a massive test die I just made in the preview. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying I'm to, gonna... I'm trying to catch up. Uh, it's happening so fast. Yeah, I'm trying to catch up with all the, the, the bidding war. So I believe two test die for Oliver. Okay. And a bonus dice for me and two more test dice for Oliver. All right. So I'm going to use one of those test die now. I haven't to... even made them yet. <laughs> so so I, have, I have three for my count and a bonus die. And here's my what a bonus pack. for me. Bonus for me. That's not me. That's me. Right. I think that's where we're at. Okay. I think here's that's where my... we're at. Four for you. One bonus die for me. Oh, I've got a test die as well. All right. Okay. So here's my counter attack, which is straight fighting with my. And you've spent one of your test die now, right? Yes. Yeah. So 26. With two sixes. Oh, man. It is two. four degrees of success again. That's going to be another 32 damage. Well, it's not. It's going to be plus four base damage. Oh, because so I... Okay. Whatever your base damage so is, that's... plus four times by four. It's going to be 46 damage. Yeesh. I mean... So as he, come, as he comes in and, and pierces Oliver through the side, uh, Oliver, in turn, wraps the... He gets the hilt, the haft of the halberd, up underneath uh, Gorman's neck into his Adam's apple and then just jams it forward straight into his throat. Sure. He's going to take another wound there. Uh, cracked jaw it cracks his jaw as he put as you push him back to back up the steps towards the cliff edge and just as you're pushing him towards that ledge he spins and makes another attack at you this time trying to slice at your leg to try and push you 
over as well. Is it is it is it still his turn, or is it my turn now? Oh, it's your turn. That was the counterattack, wasn't it? I'm gonna burn another test die here. All right. So, and that should have actually been a 25. I don't know if that changes anything, but I forgot to minus one for the injury. No, it's still. Yeah, it's still... that'll be a that'll be a 23 on this attack. As Oliver is now advancing, he's stepping up the stairs, and this time uh, his strike is coming in overhead. He's choked up a little bit on the halberd so that he has enough room, but he's going straight for Gorman's. Is, is he wearing a helm? No. no. He's going to split the head like a melon. Jesus. Uh, do you know what? I'm with a narration like that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give it to you. Uh, you have defeated him. How would you like to defeat him? He kills him. He, cut, he splits his head right down the middle. There's the sound of just wet and bone crunching. Um, and then Oliver takes his boot before his body falls and he just kicks him out of the tower. We are going to talk, take a short break there, folks. <laughs> Stay tuned. Hi, friends. Welcome to the second Blackfire Rebellion timeline. Electric Boogaloo. Um, we have officially entirely di <laughs> diverged because Sigourman Peak, who's like features so prominently in the well, the Knight's Tale is Mystery uh, Knight. That's the one. Knights, the uh, Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, mm -hmm. uh, is dead. Hey, maybe this will get us on better terms with the Targaryens because you saved um, Blood Raven a job in the future. That, that's my goal. Maybe Blood Raven like sees the different dimensions too. Who knows? Is Blood Raven Doctor Strange? Pretty much. Pretty much. I've seen however many million timelines. In none of them we play D and D regularly. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a mood because we've been away for two weeks. All right. Uh, yeah, I literally don't know really where to go from here. Um, Miriam. Oh, good. <laughs> you have been awoken in the early morning in Castle Lionwood by Deira. Uh, and this is a prearranged early rise because you are due for some combat training. So you walk down the steps of the uh, winding castle staircase from your chambers. Uh, it's kind of rough with small folk clothing. What kind? Because of, I think she, like she's been dressed up a bit in kind of Dornish attire for now. Mm. Like what? What would? What could you find? Do you think um, that she could be wearing for the kind of sparring thing? Um, I think she's probably somehow managed to wrangle like one of the small men's shirts, and and maybe like she's slightly found... oversized. Yeah, it's still a little bit baggy. You know, she's got the sleeves rolled up, and um, so she's got a little arms free. Um, she's got a belt on. She made it work. Yeah, yeah, she's she's working it. She's, she's <laughs> fashion, um, and she's got like I maybe just a pair of like rough spun trousers, or mm. something, you know, like. Cool. Uh, Deira is in similar stuff, but it, it just looks a bit more professional, like she did when she was basically a bandit um, in the mountains. Um. As you get into the yard, you are the first people in the yard, literally as the sun is rising. Um, you can't see it from the wall, but from up the, the coast and the sea. There's an array of weapons on the floor beneath you, and she asks, Try them. What? What feels right? 
I think Maria, she definitely eyes up all the different weapons and immediately like the, the long sword is out. She's like, Mm-mm, no way. That's, that's too much. Like, I don't think she could even properly lift that. Mm. Um, There's definitely a weight of like two handed weapons here as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, like spears and like different kind of weird laves and stuff that you've not quite mm-hmm. seen before. Um, you'd probably kind of recognize a couple from the, the kind of Dornish lords and knights that have started to come through summer hall more mm-hmm. um but yeah there are there are a handful of smaller weapons as well um i think she momentarily eyes the halberd and the spear um remembering oliver um but to begin with she'll go for um like a dagger just something small okay she picks it up and tests its weight yeah the handle is surprisingly more weighted than you thought. Um, but it gives you good balance in hand. And if you, she actually shows you if you balance it just beyond the hilt, then it stays on the ridge of your fingers. She kind of explains the, the, the start of it. She chooses the long sword to your surprise but she explains that well if you're going to have to, if you have to defend yourself against somebody it's likely that they're going to be wanting something like this mm-hmm. so you might as well learn now yep and and maria she she's kind of a little bit afraid like she's never really been in a combat situation and although this is training she's still got that little you know that little fear but she sort of Yep. Let's do this. So she she kind of like pads you in like a leather jerkin, hard mm. leather jerkin, um, thick. Um, she wears similar as well. And then she stands a couple of yards back from you in no particular like fighting style. There's no kind of fencing stance going on. And she just says, try and hit me. All right. And I think there's a moment of hesitation as Maria's like, I have no fucking clue what to do. So she just kind of approaches and and doesn't just come up and do like a weak sort of stab, but she does sort of pick up a pace as she approaches and like tries to copy what she saw Blackmont do with the dagger. Okay. Uh, Can you... uh... Can you roll the fighting test for me, please? I sure can, with all two of my dice big five okay like it takes her a little bit by surprise and you you kind of you do this like not flashy maneuver but it's definitely like a maneuver i think Mm. uh and then she actually has to kind of like do some leg work like but she she just parries the blow it's fairly close and she steps back a couple of paces and she was like good try again all right and try again 11 um like so how do you hit her um i think this time she sort of does a feint and sort of like sidesteps and and goes for like a swipe across her uh, like her flank Mm -hmm. she feels the and you feel the kind of blunted um tap against the leather it makes a kind of like a like a, a slightly hollow but kind of quite shallow kind of a kind of weird clonk um, as it scrapes and then across the, the armor and she steps back a and she says good, excellent, you've got you've got a knack for it um, but then she starts explaining a little bit of what you were doing of actually what like what you were doing was this, what you're trying to do is going from the other side or she's actually she actually starts now that you've hit her to actually mm-hmm. kind of go through the kind of paces of, of this kind of thing that kind of thing um okay so she is gonna roll a persuasion test to give you some bonus dice next time so if i get difficulty six oh so right you pick uh you can retain a bonus dice for your next like fight um and then use it once uh if you want her to test against difficulty six 
Or if you want two bonus dice, she could test against difficulty nine. But she's got two in persuasion. Let's go for the six. Alrighty. Hey! Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, cool. So you have a bonus dice to your next fighting. Uh, not your next fighting test, but like mm -hmm. when you want to spend it. Mm -hmm. um, and you keep that until you use it. It's taken you guys uh, probably a little over an hour. As the sun's now come up over the curtain wall, and now the, the heat of dawn is um, like it is upon you. People have started to move around the, the keep and the yard as well. There are now a couple of other uh, Dornish guards. Uh, two others who like basically using the gym as well. Uh, they've like they come to the yard and they're actually training as well. Occasionally they're taking a look at the two of you like what the f like um, but seeing what you're doing occasionally like they actually I think eventually will give you like a kind of a, like a nod and like a smile like oh, yeah you're getting it um, and that kind of thing. As they do um, to towards the end of that that training session, one of them looks over puzzled at the keep. Behind you. I think um, if I notice that, I will. I'll yeah, like he just he pauses, time. and you know how people kind of drop a little bit sometimes. He just mm -hmm. kind of like stares off, like, oh, what's, "What's going on? What's, what is it? What's happening?" So there are guards rushing, like, um, first into the kind of like the, the the door to the to the keep from the yard, and they're kind of rushing in, talking. Uh, quite frantically, and then a couple of guards rushing to the um, Maester's Tower that's separate from the keep in the yard, looks over the, the bay. Is there anything you want to do while they're up there? Uh, I want to see what's happening. Uh, I'll see today. We should, we should check out see what's happening. Okay. Uh, she sheathes the long sword, but keeps it on her belt. And she looks at you for a second and says, what are you going to do with that? Um. Um, and she, Marie doesn't really know what to do, because she probably shouldn't be carrying weapons. Um, I guess I, I should leave this here, right? You, you've got your, you, you're with me, it's fine. And she has just, like, dropped the dagger with the rest of the weapons. Mm -hmm. You head towards the doors... And the guards don't uh, stop you heading into the keep. Uh, as you head through into the antechamber, there are people that are starting to make their way upstairs towards the lawn ladies' quarters. Um, and Mary, I'll just grab like the nearest person that looks like maybe they know who th what's going on. Uh. Um. Well, you sound there's uh something uh something about uh, his lordship her ladyship uh which, are they all right what's happened uh, i don't know yet and there are people still making their way up um go rush up oh v's gone ah we've all gone weird let me just drop you into <laughs> here for a second <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> as you get to the doors, uh, or as you get into the corridor of the kind of like family's uh, place, family's quarters, uh, you make your way uh, to the crowd. The crowd that is blocking uh, this doorway, it's the doorway to uh, the Lord and Lady's chambers. Uh, and it's at this point that the maester pushes past you with a few guards. And they p eventually push their way through the crowd that have surrounded the door. What would you like to do next? Uh, I'm going to like push my way through the crowd. Cool. All right. So you managed to just 
still with a little bit of your childlike instincts just weave your way around the crowd around the adults that are all crowding the door as you get to the front of the crowd you see into the chamber a sobbing lady ironwood and on the bed lying down on his back is lord ironwood the maester takes his time looks over Lord Ironwood, checks him, from what you can tell, medically. Says something quietly to her ladyship, who then begins to sob more, much more loudly. Is there anything you'd be doing? Oh, oh, oh shit. Uh, Maria's heart plummets. Um, as she sees this, as uh, she's going to, um, I think she's torn about whether to carry on the charade or just to observe. And she's kind of hovering somewhere in between, but she's, she's clearly got that face of sort of like horror and sadness on it. You know, she's, 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 she doesn't quite know whether to take that step. From the corner of your left eye, in the corner, the near corner of the room, uh, you hear a cup go down on a table and you see Horatio uh, slowly walk forward in basically what is uh, a cloak over some, some bedclothes. And he walks forward, he talks to the uh, maester, turns to the crowd that are at the door, and quietly says, Men of House Ironwood, ladies. In this. I am sorry to pronounce the blood royal is dead. It was peaceful from what the Maester says. My father was very old. I am only thankful that his passing was not through suffering. And he takes a moment for himself, but then eventually says, we guard the way. And I shall, as my father has, and his fathers before him. And then the maester behind him says, declares, Lord Horatio Ironwood, the Blood Royal, Lord of Ironwood and Warden of the Stoneway. And a cry repeating that goes up from the crowd all around you, spilling out into the corridor as well. Be no way. <laughs> Not right now! Not say. right now! <laughs> Too soon! What is this? Is this uh, is in the old Zoom chat? I'm getting coached. Okay. You're gonna make a play, mate. Do it now. Oh, fuck! 
<laughs> do I do it? <laughs> Should I do it? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I'm getting. I'm getting the nods of approval. I'm gonna do the dumb thing. Do I push the big red stupid button? Okay. <laughs> um. Maria speaks up. With all due respect, my lord, my ladies, uncle, grandmother, what of Oliver? He is the eldest. Horatio looks sideways a little. The maester begins by saying, oh, Lord Oliver is, and Horatio just holds a hand up. Stop him speaking, he says. My brother's exile is not at an end. I... But it was. He was welcomed back to Ironwood by your father by and your mother. father, not by Lord Martel. Prince Martel is the one who issued the exile, not my father. It's not my father's, was not my father's place, nor mine, to welcome him back into this house. As much as I would love to see this family reunited, my duty, he's kind of talking to his soldiers now, my duty is to that of Dawn and to House Martel. Okay, Maria is going to get a little huff on. <laughs> and she looks him dead in the eye to bow to the Martels. You are no Ironwood. And then she's going to storm out of that room. Oh. And go up to Dayra and be like, fuck, I just did a really stupid thing. <laughs> uh, I'll take a little bonus dice there cheekily from, yeah. from Frex. Thank you, mate. Uh, all right. Cool. <laughs> um, so, I mean, going to Dayra, is there anything that you want to do? Like, is this like a oh, get out of dodge time, or is this like we've got to figure something out? Or it's kind of um, we may have to get the <laughs> fuck out of here. There may be a situation. This is a bit of a situation. I open my stupid mouth, shake my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's kind of like we're gonna stay put for now. Mm -hmm. But please don't leave my side ever until Oliver comes back, because I'm probably either dead or getting kicked out of here. Okie kokey. Mara, we are going to head back to you. And as the Greenmont and Oakheart forces, I guess, are preparing to leave are saddling up um, are basically kind of um, so that I think there has been a battle so they, they are starting to just kind of take stock a bit to recover a little to rec uh, recuperate a bit unaware of the goings on in the tower above but from the towards the bottom of the um kind of a cliff large kind of ravine that you've uh, worked your way up here to get to the to uh, the ruins um, are half a dozen or so um, men walking up the rocky surface of the ravine but a standard bearer carries a light yellow flag with a black vulture carrying a baby.
Do I recognize this this flag? Absolutely. This is Blackmont's um, heraldry. Your mother's heraldry. Um, I'm assuming that Mara is with Alistair. And yeah. if he hasn't noticed, she'll point it out. That was my mother's heraldry. What are Blackmont doing here? She'll look at him and she's she's looking for the permission to go and accompany if he goes to meet this this bearer. They want to parley they can come here. We've done enough traipsing around for the last week. The soldiers march up this ravine towards you, and you can roughly make out um, some guards and an unhelmed uh, young man, um, probably not much older, if any, than you. Um, he's got dark short hair and tight ponytail um, and as he gets closer it reveals a, uh, like a soft face of sun blushed skin he has heavy blue eyes set elegantly within their sockets uh, and he watches you quietly with a slight kind of disassociated gaze as he actually finally approaches there are three scars running down from the right side of his cheekbone towards his upper lip and end at his right nostril do Not I too... recognise this man? Um, make me a cunning memory test, please. Difficulty's going to be nine. Um, Fifteen. You take a few, like a like almost a minute, just to just to look back and think. There's something in the back of your memories, something about like a family visit, in those family visits or friends of family that just happened like way in your youth. And you're like, I remember like a staircase or I remember like being in a kitchen and like it's very vague memories and kind of roughly people's faces. There's something about this face that's, that strikes you um, uh, as well as very recognizable. And finally, just through calculating who's who, maybe in the family, you think this is Marwin Blackmont. Firstborn like son of Lord Blackmont. So he'd be my cousin. He would be your cousin. Um, is Alistair moving to approach this man? Or is Alistair just kind of waiting where he is? Alistair is sat, just pissed off and pooped. Basically. Oh, Mara, Mara's going to go and do the decent thing and go and greet this man. And she'll walk up to him and say, Cousin? I'm sorry, my lady. I am, I am Mara Oakheart, formerly Mara Greenmont. And why are you here, Mara? I am here accompanying my husband and a host that is currently returning upon the orders of Makar. Why are you here, cousin? I am here because I think you have my father. That we do. Well, not we, but somebody, and she looks back at Vulture's Roost. I believe he is in there. I haven't seen him since I arrived. We are leaving upon the orders of the prince. Yeah. I don't know why you've both bothered to recover him. Your father is a traitor, a kidnapper. My father is just that, my father. I'm here because, well, what would you do? Exactly the same. And I'm sure if you were me, you'd say exactly the same thing. Believe me, I bear you no ill ill. 
a ill will cousin. I can see there's been a battle here. How was your force? I don't pry into the war councils of my husband. Sorry, that was out of I mean, character. We all know she does. But... I mean, bullshit, right? <laughs> but yeah. Um. Commanding forces is not what I do here. I'm here simply to be with my husband. Sir. You said this man was carrying a baby. No, no, no. So the the, oh. the emblem, the charge on the shield oh, is a okay. vulture carrying a baby. Okay. He's not like, hey, <laughs> you know. <he's, laughs> Just wanted to double check that. No, 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 no. Sorry. There was maybe a little bit more of a pause between vulture and baby than there should have been, but yeah. <laughs> vulture carrying a baby. Um. Okay. Uh. Well, so he actually kind of leans just around to you and says, "Sir, may I approach?" And Lord Alistair kind of like waves him over. Um. For the sake of not fucking role playing myself for a while, can you just interject here as well? Because that would that would help. <laughs> Mara will kind of walk just ahead of him because mm -hmm. in her mind this is also her camp so he doesn't get to walk ahead of her even if he is a man <laughs> I, w I won't play with words I'm here to parley she looks to Alistair as if say are you even going to say anything and if he doesn't then she will speak yeah, V, just fucking talk to me, God's sake. She'll, I imagine Alistair just kind of is looking and waiting and she'll she'll kind of look with a look of like exasperation, just like, I know you're done, but come on. It's like, and why is it you wish to parley? We don't hold your father. Who does? Whichever of the forces are still left in Vulture's Roost. Of which you travelled here? You say you're here on behalf of the prince. No, I say we are leaving at the behest of the prince. Oh. So not such of a traitor then. I believe the forces still in Vulture's Roost are that of the House Tarly, that of the House Ironwood, and that of the House Peak. Which one holds your father, I do not know. But I was told that he was in custody when we left. Cousin, am I want to go up there, or will I be set upon just as quickly? The issue that I had with your father, the reason that I pushed for my husband to come out here, and why he was so willing and eager among the loyalty to his fellow countrymen, was because your father stole my sister away and ruined her reputation and had her branded a traitor. That I have heard. That is the only reason that anyone would have been harmed. I do not know. I cannot speak for the peak, Tali, or I am with men on how they would view you. I would hope that Sir Oliver would be more forgiving. But the others, they do not like Dornishmen. And I don't like them. I'm sure. If you want my advice, cousin, it would be to turn around and go home. I believe Sir Oliver's plan was to have your father stand trial for his crimes. Turn around with whatever host you have Go home and wait for that trial. You can protest your father's innocence. Or you can plead for what sentence he gets there. But there has already been a battle on this field, and I don't think any more people have to die over your father. How big is your host? It's good seeing you, cousin. He turns to walk away. She'll look at Alistair and say, we should leave. We should, yeah. We should, we should go before another battle breaks out and we're called in to help. 
the Blackmont men arriving, they will not take kindly to having him taken. And should anything happen, I don't want us to be here and be blamed for it. If there is a battle and they do recover him and he's been beaten bloody, which is, I think he deserves it. The last thing we need is Dawn coming after us for that. Easiest way home would be north near Star Pike, but I don't feel like I want to really walk along that same path. We should send a rider ahead. I imagine that Makar is sending men, if not even coming himself. We should send a rider ahead to alert him that we are returning home as we've been requested. To where though, Greenmont? Or to, like towards to Greenmont? Yes, I would like to stop by, see the Lady Marcia, my brothers, and then home. I've had quite enough of war, and I do pray that you have too. He stands, he starts to move around the camp a little bit more about kind of telling people, like, pack your things, that do this, do that. Uh, Mara will organise for the rider then. And sure. she will she will pen she will pen a letter to go with it um, that says, you know, basically we you know, as requested, the Greenmont and Oakheart forces are, you know, separating from the host under the order of Makar. Mm -hmm. We recognise this and are making our way back to Greenmont territory. Cool. Sure. The, the usual standard, we meant no ill will. Mm -hmm. We're doing as we're told. Cool. And that we come with, we, we come with no prisoners or anything. We have completely just left. Yeah. And she will send a rider, if not a couple of riders, to make sure nobody gets caught up with bandits in the mountains. Mm -hmm. To ensure that, and uh, instruct them to meet with Makar's host if there is one. Okay. I'll clarify that. I just can note it down, just sending a rider ahead. Just make sure I've got it written down. All right, cool. Oliver. What is your next move? Well, he has to go back down the stairs. When he gets towards the bottom, Tali is busying troops, getting them moving around, getting them back out of the um, the ruin. And he see, as he sees you, he says, uh, Sir Oliver, I... Sir? Lord Blackmont, Lord Peak, they are gone. What? They are dead, Lord Tarly. What's the meaning of this? What? How? I am a knight of the Seven Kingdoms. You know me. I have sworn an oath to speak the truth in all things. Lord Peak, he was angry. He would not listen to reason. When I told him we were returning to House Ironwood, he threw Lord Blackmoth from the top of the tower. I rushed to the window because Lord Blackmoth is the only man in the Seven Kingdoms whose word can free Lady Miria. But I was not fast enough. 
And then Lord Peak drew his knife and tried to kill me. I admit my God. own anger. I should have let him live. I should have let him stand trial for his actions, for his treason. But it has been a long day and I am sick of traitors. You are a wise lord. You have much more knowledge than me of the courts and the way nobles live. What do you suggest, Lord Tarley? We are leaving. And we are taking these prisoners with us to High Garden. There, I might be able to save some face. But I Is will that with you? But I will remember what happened here, and I will remember what you said. Who do you save face for, Lord Tarly? My house. And the king that bore the sword. He is your king now, after everything. He was. Our king, remember that, was. Whether his son remains so, I do not know. But let us not be hasty here, Sir Oliver, like you have today. I will send word for you when I can to your house. Oliver is saying this, but Oliver is trying to ascertain whether or not he can trust that Lord Tarly isn't going to throw him under the bus to the Tyrells. So can I make some kind of, can I make like an empathy check or, or something? Nope. It's <laughs> in D&D, &D, mate. Yeah. <clears throat> well, he's not really in a position to do anything else. He would try one more time. <clears throat> it may be that acting slowly means that we do not have the chance to act while we still have power. Will you not come with me to House Ironwood? Not now. I have to return to Highgarden with something. But then, Sir Oliver, then, I hope, Lord Tarly, that you are still a man of honor and truth, and that you are not like Lord Peak. I hope so too. He is moving slowly. He stumbles the next couple of steps down the stairs, but catches himself till he's chest to chest with Lord Tarley. And he offers him a gripping hand if Tarley will take it. Mm. 
yeah, he takes your forearm, and there's one of those really manly arm shakes. And yeah. Oliver like, whispers as they grip each other's arms, and he pulls in a little bit closer. To a better tomorrow for a new and better king. Hey, okay, let's go. That is where we will wrap up tonight, folks. Oh, we're back in it with full steam ahead. Jeez. Sam, the, the fruits were juicy tonight. They were. Juicy, juicy, juicy fruits. Oof. Oh. Chase is like, oh, come on. I haven't got any more, man. I haven't got any. <laughs> the juices, they have been juiced. The pulp is in there, too. We've put some of the skin in, just because... Man. The... Oh. <laughs> there we go. Oh. All right. So, uh, let's let's start. We have to go around and talk about this. Let's start with Susie having like having had the most gap since the the big the big things so i'll put the plot forward a bit yeah just, just a little bit yeah and then i hit the big stupid button you can't set me up like this is more don you can't set me up at succession crisis and then not have that follow through like come on no it's good I, I was waiting for it to happen yeah i was like something's gonna happen and of course, like, the Tim Fall is all poison, right? Poison. Yeah. I saw. I saw chat. I saw chat. Chat's just like poison, murder. <laughs> right. Do you think Horatio is really that bad? He's kill his own dad. Yes. Yes. He tried to poison his own brother in a friendly tourney you match. People. God. Convenient timing. So. <laughs> convenient. <laughs> How convenient. <laughs> Horatio so, gets back and then his elderly father just fucking dies. Hmm. Alright, let's, let's not go almost marple on this. <laughs> <laughs> Although, if you do, I fully support that gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, Charlie's just put in chat that he thinks that she thinks that he got Jane to do it with a pillow. Fucking hell, Jane. Jeez, no. What? I wish not... that's out of the window now that I've just publicly said, fuck the Martells in front of everybody. Yeah. Whoops. Oh man. <laughs> Good though. Jeez. Yeah. Sweet. We we got some little we got some cool little tasty uh training in as well. Yeah, and well, it's good to know that if Mary needs to stab somebody, she could maybe probably do it. Yeah. Noise, noise, noise. Alright. Um what are you very quickly up to that you want to chat about? Uh anything coming up? Oh, uh, well, we've got, um, oh, tomorrow, actually, I, on my channel, I'm doing a very special Magic the Gathering arena and unboxing stream, because I got huh. sent a lovely box from Wizards of the Coast, so I'm going to open some boosters, I'm going to open some um, that card pocket decks. Get that cardboard crack out. Get yeah. that crack out, yeah. Um, maybe play a bit of arena afterwards and show everybody how bad I am at Magic. Um, and then uh, next week I've got um, Spyhander on Wednesday. We got Grains of Truth on Monday. Nice. Everybody's internet permitting. Mm. Um, and next Friday, I think it's next Friday, the twenty fourth is the no twenty fifth is the nope nope never mind. No, it's a thing. You should watch out for. It hasn't been announced yet. Can't can't say it. Nearly said it, but. A thing. Are we al are we not allowed? I don't know. I can't I'm remember. not saying anything. It hasn't. I no. don't think it's been announced unless somebody wants to tell us otherwise. Folks, yeah. watch watch out. Watch for I, I'll encounter roleplay the 25th. Something. You can say okay. It's a Star Trek game. A minute. So, well, <laughs> let me let me cheekily. Mm. <laughs> so I might get in, in I might get into some trouble. So maybe it's not. Oh. oh, wait! Charlie put. We can say that we're doing a thing. <laughs> All I can say was, "We can say." I'm sorry, Charlie. <laughs> it's a thing. Move on. Move on. Move on. <laughs> if anyone saw that little teaser and knows what that is, good on you. Don't tell anyone else. Shh. All right. Cool. No. It oh, wait, cool. yeah. No, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. All right. It's cool. Right. Spill the beans. <laughs> oh, what? <coughs> oh, 
Should we start again? It's Trek. Why Charlie's done it on a roller coaster. coaster. <laughs> what a roller coaster. Okay, folks, Encounter Roleplay are going to be exclusively playing one of the first actual play sessions of Strange New Worlds, the second mission compendium. These are our lovely staff advanced copies. No one else has these yet. They are lush. They're so pretty. I want to be trying running it on uh, my channel at some point later in the year. Uh, after I have done some on Modifius's channel as well, actually at the office. We play there too on a Wednesday afternoon in the UK. So this is our big mission compendium, um, our second one. Uh, we did, these are the voyages when we first uh, released the core rulebook. Um, and this one is called Strange New Worlds. And Virginia's name is in it. And I wrote one of the adventures in it. And it's I'm super it's really excited about good. it. And I'm really excited about this book. So we are plugging it away. Um, so... Uh, the kind of more official like press release thing um, is going to be broken at some point by Star Trek dot com. Uh, until then, hush hush. <laughs> yeah. But you can find Susie and me over on Encounter Roleplay Play on Friday, where I will be running one of my favourite adventures um, from this, having read them all for a bunch of really awesome people. So please come and check that out. And I've designed the overlay. Yeah. And it looks so good. Cause... Yeah, if you saw that um, selfie of me the other day in the uh, uniform, that's what it's for. Where are you going, sciences or medical? Um, Neither of those. Neither. <laughs> I'm going comms. Oh, cool. All right. Yes, Susie. You're going to be the captain? No. Captain Susie. I mean, I am the captain, but not this time. You can be one of those crazy drunk Commodores from TOS. Yes. I'm in. All right. There you go. All right. Um, cool. So that actually is us nicely over towards V. Yes. So I'm doing that. This session was amazing. And I'm stress eating freeze dried ice cream because I don't know how else to cope. What? <laughs> so it's, it's an ice cream sandwich. It's freeze dried like astronaut food. It's great. Uh, all right. I went to a museum the other day. This is the kind of stuff I come back with. Oh, oh yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh, I'm so glad that Alice is done with war. This is exactly oh. what Mara knew was going to happen. He was going to be like, this is a bit shit. Is he though? I don't know if he's done with like going to war, but I think he's done with this one. <laughs> Which she's okay with, because hopefully by the time the next one rolls around, this will have knocked some sense into him about how to go about things. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Um, um, but you talked about your new stream stuff coming up. Where can we actually find that? Yes. So um, I am starting a stream. I'm hoping for maybe November, but it depends on time and scheduling for everyone I'm going to try and get involved that it's called um, RPG Horde One Shots which is where I take a bunch of books from the bookcase behind me of games I've bought and haven't actually played properly and I run one shots for them and that's going to be on my Twitch channel which is twitch.tv slash tabletop board but if you follow me on Twitter uh, you will see as I'm posting stuff up I've been posting the overlays that I made and some logo graphics and stuff that I've been making um but everything will go up there as soon as there's more stuff announced. And all of the people who think that they might want to do this, you're probably going to get some messages from me at some point on some various social media being like, play games with me, please. Um, so that's going to be fun. But aside from that, the project I've been working on for Modifius for the last year was announced this evening. It was. Um, which It sure. was, which is an RPG for the uh, Homeworld game which was the 90s rts ship battles game we're making an rpg of it i have been developing and line managing that and i'm super proud that it's out and there's the pretty piece of cover art on there um so i'm super super excited all round of new rpg stuff happening and i've got loads more planned for my own content as well so keep an eye on my my twitter where i'll be posting stuff awesome i'm very excited too and Don. Don. Don, Don, Don. Don. <laughs> Hello. Oh, man. Oh, man. 
Yeah, uh, this was um, if it, it, maybe my favorite session of the campaign so far. Definitely one of them. Definitely right near the top. Um, I think we've implied a lot of treason uh, throughout this campaign, but today it became super real. Super real. I, I didn't. I didn't want to kill Gorman Peak. I wanted his armies and his clout to follow me along. Uh, I don't know what's the what's that weird video game series where you play a little ball and you roll up little things and you yeah. just keep getting bigger. Yes, we were talking. Yes, we were talking this the other day. Oh, I was hoping to pull a catamari, uh, catamari and uh, it didn't quite work out. But I loved it. I loved every moment. I think my favorite part, uh, at least that I was involved with, was sla slapping Alistair in, the, in his lips. Fucking love that. Man. Um, because <laughs> he had it coming yeah. uh, but I, I i just like playing with you guys a whole lot and um i i don't know what's gonna happen next i don't know how we kind of rebound from this um but i'm looking forward to finding out um you can follow me on twitter i also write games and publish them uh and run games i run a lot of games i think i was saying earlier um I don't have a lot. I, I've cleared my writing plate. Once I get to the end of the year, I'm sort of working on my last three adventures and projects right now. But I am prepping a lot of campaigns to run next year. And I have a lot of, I think, really cool things planned. Um, so I'll be sharing more of that as we get towards the end of the year. But uh, the most exciting upcoming things for me. Um, I just finished uh, my my player book, my handbook for an adaptation of Dark Sun to 5th edition. Uh, D and D fifth edition, uh, and I'm running that for a, a small group of people uh, for my Patreon. Uh, I'm really excited about that because I love Dark Sun. I, I mean, I love it, and I'm not gonna lie. Um, sort of the inspiration, I, I took some inspiration from this campaign, from the intrigue encounters, and I created a D and D intrigue encounter, social encounter system. That's not this system, but but definitely I'm seeing this system in action made me think like D&D &D needs something like this. This mm. is a big, big hole uh, for D&D &D, in my opinion. Um, so I'm excited to kind of play test that in my Dark Sun campaign. <laughs> how, uh, how, much, uh, how much money do I have to pay you to uh, let me play? What? How much money do I have to pay you to uh, let me play? It, it, so it's a bi-weekly game and I do have one seat open. It is fifty dollars a session, so it's a hundred dollars per month. But Oof. but I, I am gonna be running more dark sun outside of it too on stream. This is off a of stream, of course, but I'm just excited to actually get to delve into the world. Um, cause it's been a long time for Dark Sun for me. Uh, and other than that, I have my Dragonlance campaign is coming to an end. Uh, it has been over a year now, uh, and we're including like a couple of bonus sessions. I think we're hitting like our 40, 40th session next week with our finale. Uh, so that's on Wednesday night next week at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, it's going to be full of feels and uh, probably uh, juicy fruits of its own. And yes. that's what I've got going on. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Well, you all know where to find me, roughly speaking. I think it's, hang on. Let me see if this works. Yay! Thanks, Nightbot. Uh, so, uh, by day, I am at Modifius Entertainment. I'm the head of RPG development there. Otherwise, I am one half of Black Cats Gaming. Um, and we are making the Spy Game, which is a 5e-derived open game license game. All about spies and action and espionage and all that kind of stuff. The beta just landed. It's the first iteration of the beta. We've still got some stuff to add to it. So if you're waiting for a character sheet, a custom character sheet, and if you're waiting for a bit more on vehicles and some other stuff like that, then hold tight because that is all coming uh, too soon. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just check, look out for that. We'll be uh, doing a late pledge pretty soon. We're just working on our pledge manager at the moment. So if you are watching, if you're watching back on YouTube or anything like that, you haven't quite got your hand in it yet and you're looking to get into it, then we do have a late pledge. You will be able to get the book as backers do as well. Become a backer, even. So, uh, thanks very much for watching, fam. It was just a fucking roller coaster of a... Uh, my script went out the window, like, halfway through. I was, you know, I was like, 
Oh, it's good. Oh, Gormy storming off. Oh, so I was gonna like, I was gonna like start fighting you, uh, like down there on the on the floor first. I felt it. I felt that. And then you were like, ah, oh, defeated. And I was like, oh. so like just walked him off upstairs. And I was like, ah, oh, I could do this thing upstairs. I'm not really listening to anyone else, but I could do the thing. I could push him off the side of the cliff. Cool. Let's do this. And it it was the I had my little internal uh, DM smile. So rather than just like turning to V at work and being like, yeah, I could do the thing. I was just like, in my head, I was just like, yeah, I could do the thing. So that's. You, you rolled a 19, Sam, and you only had to roll a 20, and I had no destiny. Like you came, that is literally as close to death as I possibly could have come. I've got, and, I've got to be creative with you because you've got this silly berserk perk that lets you just you like know, fuck people up. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And if, if you'd pushed Oliver out the window, I would have cheered internally and cried externally. But oh. I really appreciate that you tried. It means a lot. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us, folks. Uh, remember, we are here every Thursday at uh, 8 p.m. UK time, uh, which will change soon f while we change time zones uh, later in the month. Um, but that, I believe, still at the moment is 3 p.m in the eastern seaboard um thank you very much we will see you again next week hopefully where we have the heist of the century <laughs> we have that session to still do and Tom will finally be back surrounded by a bunch of weird characters dumb plan dumb plan dumb plan so excited more dumb plans thank you folks we will see you next week bye bye